Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today we'll be looking at some Ricochet gameplay on the map, Pitfall. If you're not already familiar with Ricochet, I'd just like to reorientate the rules here. If you grab the ball and throw it into the enemy zone, that is 20 points. If you walk it in, it is 50 points. A few things I'd like to mention at the beginning here before we get into the gameplay. These teammates who I have on my team are three people I randomly joined with in a match very late at night when I had really not many teammates on to play with, so I randomly joined through this game. Now, I would like to point out that wins in Ricochet count towards wins in your oddball commendation. There's no new commendation made for uh, Ricochet specifically, so they kind of tack those on to oddball. Actually, several of the oddball commendations are actually counted for in Ricochet. It's really quite interesting. So these three PLAers I joined with, while we do end up doing pretty well together, they're not the best examples to go by, as will be shown in this gameplay, and I have no hard feelings towards them, but um, you'll you'll be able to quickly see. I mean, even in this opening rush here, my teammate runs far, grabs the rockets, Jeff packs up as high as he can into the air, fires one rocket, which completely misses any sort of enemy players, because I've already watched this film many times, and he completely misses. And he continues to do several things like that. Now, I want you to see what I just did there. I jumped out at the enemy rocket carrier because I knew he was, had rockets he's most likely going to be aiming at the floor. So with my, uh, my approach to him is to jump out at him. Now I do end up dying here of course, but he has one less rocket to shoot at my teammates. You always want to be jumping when you're around the rocket carrier and the button configuration bumper jumper is really great at that. You can jump with the left bumper and can aim still while jumping. It's really cool. Now right here is an excellent place to snipe that the enemy player is using. He's using our side of sword. Um, the why this is really cool is because in Ricochet, a lot of the times you're holding the ball over here somewhere, watching your radar to watch for enemy players on their side, and waiting for the, some a few guys to die, pop up as X's, and then you can run on through. Well, it's great at sniping position because oftentimes you're never over here as a team. So the enemy sniper pushed up very well right here and is um, looking through this area um, you can even snipe the fusion coils which is a great idea so just to give you guys a heads up on that tactic so i do call that enemy player out um, that would be our sword side they have sniper at our sword side um, this is long hall that i'm in front of right now and then there's a green box or green hallway uh, this is called training um, of the map this whole ramp area is training our training their training uh, training ramp uh, lower training that sort of deal and then, of course, you've got the sword room. That's where the sword did spawn, or it still does, but it did spawn there in Halo 3 every three minutes. But uh, it only spawns at the, the beginning of the game, and, of course, later in the game as well. All right, here, really trying to kill off this enemy player. Um, the main reason I get the betrayal here is because my teammate uh, very dumbly decided to um, run at the enemy ball carrier. And I, I think this was um, unfortunate on his part because you never want to get close to the enemy ball carrier. When you're holding the ball, it is a melee one-hit instant kill. So if you melee someone, it will immediately kill them no matter what. You don't need to get really close to the enemy carrier. He should have, my teammate should have jumped up here and provided support fire while shooting him. This guy is not going anywhere. So my teammate running in front of that grenade, while it is partly my fault for throwing the grenade, obviously, uh, the betrayal is almost unavoidable at that, at that point. I almost get betrayed by my teammates' nades there, now that I see that. Right here, really just trying to get to the enemy side. Again, my shots are really on point this game. And I have no idea what this guy is doing. Uh, I think he just isn't watching his radar because he just gets embarrassingly destroyed here. Um, and this is absolutely critical how I run decide to run this ball. My teammates have gotten it over here, and... When, when we kill them off on this side of the map, they're going to be spawning on the opposite side, which is really critical to understand. They're going to be spawning somewhere over here, which is why I like Pitfall a lot. Because once you push up and kill three or four dead on one side, you can get a cap or, or throw, or a run-in or a throw, should I say. Well, what I do here is instead of trying to go for this window, which is, by the way, the wrong way if you're trying to run the ball straight in, it's the wrong way because you're super easy to shoot. What I decide to do is drop down here where there is some cover behind this wall where he can't shoot me as much. And you see I do that 
surviving, run around this corner and run straight in. Notice how the enemy had to come around the corner here to get to me, or around this corner first to get to me, forcing them to make the move. That's really what you want to be doing, and you're going to see later on in this film an example of my teammate doing the wrong thing. Now the ball did just spawn in long hallway. My teammate's placing a good bubble shield there. The sword is up in sword room, and they do have it. Putting some shots into their enemy sniper here. Um, we did get another throw there. Um, it's a very good job on my teammate's part, and as you can see, the reason probably why we got that throw is because there's two enemy players over here. Um, so they just ran through those other two people on the opposite side. Keeping track of the sword guy, I kill him. Excellent use of the thruster pack to get under the enemy players here. Now I noticed that the enemy player is pushing in on our base, and I'd like to point out here that while we do stop the enemy player, what happens afterward is really undesirable as we get three guys one shot. This guy's already dead, and we the enemy team gets a triple killer close to it um, as we all die. Uh, there's a, even a second part in this film where the exact same thing happens. Um, this is really boils down to a communication issue. Um, good job on my teammates throwing that away from the base, but it doesn't end up doing much as the enemy team runs it straight in. Um, what I was saying there is the communication issue resolves around the ball. If your team calls out, hey, I got this, you know, for example, if I didn't have to run all the way across here, underneath here, kill the ball carrier, which with three of my teammates around, and then come up here, jump up this, and die. Okay, if my team had communicated to me earlier that, hey, we got this guy, I could have stayed over here and not died by providing support fire on these enemy players, possibly preventing them from nading my teammates as they jumped up this little box to our plat. This guy, I really don't know what he was doing. He was right here. He should have waited for his shields to fully regenerate, then quickly run around the corner. We wouldn't have been able to kill him in that time, but he didn't wait for his shields to regenerate, unfortunately. This guy is in our base. We really want to take him out. Um, I don't know why the enemy player decides to use the bolt shot at this range. It doesn't work very well. He landed a direct shot, and you can see he only took halfway my shield. Now right here, uh, again, this is exactly where all four of my teammates, as you can look on the radar here, all four of my teammates and I are in the same general location. That's rarely what you, what you want to do. And I want you to watch my radar very, very closely here, as two of my teammates give the enemy team an easy double kill with the nade. Um, if, in fact, we can just watch it from third person, as they just get destroyed here. The reason why is because when you have the ball, the enemy team can tell where you are. As you can see, uh, they can tell where I am all the time. So they're going to be throwing nades at me, trying to shoot me across map. And if your teammates are all next to you when you have the ball, um, that's not necessarily a good idea. Now here's a good, again, again, a great example of throwing the ball, pulling out my BR, and instead of, um, this player gets absolutely embarrassed. He missed the melee, and my teammate did a really good job of cleaning him up. Um, kind of lost my train of thought there. Anyway, we're pushing the enemy side. Um, I see a guy here, and watch my patience here as I wait for my teammate who has rockets as I wait for my teammate to kill uh, this this guy. This My teammate is kind of slow with rockets for whatever reason. Um, here he does a pretty good job of getting that guy, but I am um, aware of that and letting my teammate do some work there. That guy had a sniper. Um, he ends up sniping me a second time. And here's what I'd like to point out, okay? The enemy players have the ball on our side right here. In fact, two of them are over here. And I want you to notice where my teammate with the rocket is, okay? He's all the way over on their side. And now what I want you to notice here, uh, I'm actually skipping through uh, my second death of enemy sniper. The guy he's chasing he right be. here, okay? Cool. This guy snipes me. As you can see right there, Jenner just died. That's me. Um, I died while he's on their side with rockets. You really want to be near the ball. There is rarely, rarely any reason why you'd want to not be near the ball or heading towards the ball in some way, unless the enemy has it and have a really good setup. Okay, there's very rarely any sort of reason why. Now, he does get the kill, which is good, but again, if he had been a more on our side, it would have been a little bit more nice. It would have been a little bit better. I believe that was the same guy who grabbed Rock at the beginning of the game and um, didn't get any kills from him. 
Again, my shot's really on point here. Almost get the triple here, but I decide to um, back down a little bit with the ball. I'm not sure what this guy is doing over here on the enemy side. He does end up killing these players, but um, let's see what happens here. There I am. All right, so moving the ball over here. Um, what I'd like to point out here is my teammate decides to go for uh, like the most expert throw of his life through this. And while it is very possible to make it through here, it is simply not advisable at all because he made the throw completely wrong. You actually want to bounce it along the roof here. Um, you cannot just throw it off, but of course it will hit this right there as it does. And you, what he should have done, and this is, this is really critical, you, he should have run into green box, jumped out here and immediately throw it. Just immediately have thrown it into the zone because there are enemy players here who are very likely to take him out. He would have gotten the score. And this happens again later on in the film. We are 20 points ahead of the enemy team, but we really do want to keep the fleet. Fortunately here, um, I do end up dying. The enemy player does a great job of throwing the ball across the map, and I, my teammate and I get naded. Uh, and I called out there. My teammates I was nading long haul. I'm going to be nading green, green haul right here. Now that is a preferable distance to zoom. The reason why I didn't zoom throughout that entire battle was simply because um, I didn't know if the enemy player was going to push up or not. But as soon as he didn't, I zoomed again to try to get the kill, but he'd already backed around the corner. Ball's coming up in four seconds. Uh, when the ball is reset, it does take 10 seconds to reset in one of three locations. Here, here, and of course, bottom of sword, right there. This is random. Uh, when the ball resets, it does randomly reset to one of those three locations, and you do have to wait for 10 seconds. Fortunately, my thrust pack doesn't end up working there. I don't know what the enemy player was doing there, throwing the ball over to the right-hand side of the map. Uh, this actually happens to be where one of my teammates is at the moment, um, and this ends up not working out for them very well. I'm not sure what that guy was doing either. He should have run up the lift if he could have possibly made it. You have the ball. Excellent shots on my part. Missed a few at the very end there, but overall good. Now I wanted I want you to notice something right there, what I did with the ball. If you thrust your pack as you grab the ball, you can use the speed boost sort of that the ball gives you sort of thrust your pack a little farther and right here i survive actually way longer than i thought i would um, my shield slightly regenerate before i die sco doesn't manage to get any kills there and rock only managed to get one kill with the sword i believe before dying um, right here i would like to point out something very uh very humorous this grenade bounces right here sorry for the noise and it hurls the ball straight up into the air at fat uh, this is frames literally frames as the ball shoots up out of the map squiggles around for a while and then resets um, i've never seen stuff like that happen very much at all but the ball occasionally can do this so i'm really confused my teammate calls out to me if the enemy players threw the ball off the map which isn't exactly what happens but it's definitely a good enough call out a pass in my board Right here, um, I again throw the ball and choose to start shooting, which was definitely the best idea. If I had kept holding on to the ball, um, I probably would have died there. Right here is a really big fail on my part. I should have not charged out here at all. Um, I should have waited for my teammate who is over here to get some support fire kills on these two guys. Instead, I end up charging out with a bad idea on my part. Rockets are up, and I would like to point out a really good use of the thruster pack, even though I do end up eventually dying here. Again, he wastes the rocket on me as I use thruster pack, but his grenade unfortunately ends up ends up cleaning me up. Um, you can do that with the thruster pack, it's really nice. Um, I did pull out my teammate, but he charged the same hallway, not sure why. Here's why I grabbed the sniper. Don't usually do that, um, and this game can be really hectic, and sometimes the sniper is not. Um, the most optimal thing to have on the map, especially with a player of my skill level, I have to really decide where I'm going to be. I'm more useful closer to the ball and in everyone's face than I am hanging back. So grabbing the sniper was a questionable play, but
Uh, we are 20 points ahead right now, so we'd like to just point that out. That's one of the reasons. This is an insane snapshot on the enemy sniper, uh, absolutely dominating him. Uh, just ridiculously good shots here. Um, again, being very patient. Now, um, right here I'm just waiting for heads to pop into view. Uh, this is unfortunate because I do get sniped. Now, I would like to point out why I'm aiming below the enemy player here. Um, I'm aiming below him because he's on a slight down incline, and unfortunately, um, I end up hitting his shoulder. I, If he was a little bit over, I probably would have hit his head, but um, he was doing a great job of strafing and ends up completely sniping me, just giving an idea of why I was aiming more at his shoulder than at his head. But very good snipe on the enemy part right there. Now, I do end up getting the sniper again. And get up getting a really cool uh, quick scope um, on the enemy player. And I would like to point out something right here. Um, as I do pick up this uh, sniper and do uh, get this really nice quick scope there, um, I see the bubble shield. And all you really have to do with the bubble shield, especially if you don't see an enemy player really close to you, is jump into it and then jump straight out of it. Um, you're, you, the bubble shield is really mainly useful for getting your shields to start regenerating earlier than they normally do. That's what I do, you know, I pop into the shield and pop out, which is really nice. I'd say the bubble shield can potentially be very useful in this, on this map especially because, as you can see, um, we're sort of holding this area, this whole side, and so if we got weak from a grenade thrown through a hallway, my teammate could lay down a bubble shield right here and we could all sort of jump into it without the fear that enemy players would be on our side because you can pretty much control your side, especially if you have snipe rifle on your snipe tower. I'm S2 right now, that's the technical, I'm on our plat right now. I just jumped to our green box and I'm running through our green hall. Now, unfortunately, this push by me doesn't end up working and I'd like to point out the complete stupidity of my teammate as he leaps all the way to their plat and doesn't even throw the ball. And when you die like this, the ball is not very buoyant. Look, look, look how it just sort of stuck there in the ground. It doesn't bounce. If you die, it sort of just becomes this stagnant weight that hits the ground. If you throw it, it's a little bit more buoyant, but you, you needed to jump out and at the very least needed to have thrown it right here. There's no need to try to get a, get a, get a run in because we're already ahead. You, there's no need to be that desperate. Again, not trying to give my teammates a really hard time in this game. They just provide really good examples of what to do and what not to do. And it's it's really, you can definitely learn from that. H2O giving some really good support by here. Really good job goalie on my part. Now I want to point out, why was I standing here literally this entire time? Because they're going to try to get a throw here. They're going to try to tie us up. If they get a throw at 20 points, they'll tie us up. So I'm goalieing. That's what my technical term is. And I told my teammates that, hey guys, I'm goalieing. And it turns out it's a really good idea because they come charging and throw it. This is what the enemy players do. As soon, as soon as you start putting fire on the enemy player charging your base, he will throw it. And so you can intercept it like I just did there and get some few metal points. Now, this is not, again, not the most optimal gameplay on my teammates' part. Uh, I do clear the ball. Ball cleared means you throw it more than 20 meters or 30 meters away from your base. That's what I just did here. But I'm really worried about this enemy player at the base. Uh, the, enemy, the enemy player makes a terrible throw um, and doesn't get it in, but that could have been pretty hectic for us. That's an enemy player in our needle pit. All right, so right here where I die, um, that enemy player is in our pit. Uh, that is the area called our pit. Needles is actually called um, here. Unfortunately, sometimes I call this our needle pit. This is not correct. This is our pit. This is our needles. This used to be where the needler spawned in Halo 3, right there. So, uh, going back to where I am here. So there's a lot of switching in this gameplay. I'm just really trying to um, point out things while I'm respawning to give you guys more in-depth strategies and stuff. That was a call out from my teammate. There's a guy weak our training. So while our sniper is up, we do have the ball more towards their side. I use the thruster pack expertly to stay alive here, and using the environment to really, really get behind cover. 
is a great example of staying alive and giving up your forward position to relax back onto your side. Uh, this is really unfortunate. The enemy player decides to jump right here, and so I missed the headshot. Um, and then I end up following him, but he throws the ball to our side. We get nade on that player. Um, trying to help my teammate out here, not sure what to do. Again, I pop into the bubble shield, then pop straight back out. Uh, that was a really good job of my teammate throwing down the bubble shield right there. Ironically, I get the second guy. My teammate is doing a really good job of sniping here. And I see that the ball is already pushed to our side, so I immediately push back. This is what my teammate with the rocket failed to do. Um, he should have sprinted all the way back to our base. You can see how quickly it got me. Um, now, all of that was my team with the sniper right there. When you saw uh, those two red dots go off in our hallway, those were enemy players dying from my teammate who had the uh, sniper. Good job on his part. Now, here's where it becomes a little bit uh, silly. Uh, my teammate does throw it in for 20 points here, um, but the enemy players just don't seem to realize that I'm here. Now, this is a great example. What you're about to see right here is a phenomenal example of the Battle Rifle 4 shot and how I love Halo 4 and its crisp shot registration. Um, compared to any other Halo game, you cannot do this typically in online matchmaking, where you're about to see right here. One, two, three, four. Just absolutely beautiful. Destroying the enemy player and being able to stay alive in their base. Now, I'd like to point out something here. The rest of the film is actually quite dull. Um, not for uh, my teammates, obviously, because if if the enemy players get a goal and run in a goal right now, as you can see the score, they'd get 50 points, which would make their score 100. And they would beat us with 28 seconds left. Um, what I'm trying to do is stay in the enemy base so that they can throw the ball across map to me. Unfortunately, that never ends up happening. Um, it's kind of kind of dumb. I do end up providing some support fire for my teammates. Um, and I would like to point out a really cool thing that my teammate does here. He ends up assassinating the enemy ball carrier. And here's a really neat thing that I did never notice that my teammate pointed out to me. When you're assassinating the ball carrier, you see how the ball stays sort of locked on his character until he's dead? and then falls directly into the floor, if you just hit him from behind and didn't assassinate him, it would fly, it would sort of, you know, roll across the floor, right? And maybe possibly even roll into the goal if that's what he was going for. Luckily, he wasn't there. But if you assassinate him, the ball drops like a dead weight onto the ground. It's really kind of interesting. He doesn't go as far. There, there my teammate grabs the ball. So just a cool tip to point out to you guys. Get the double kill for the killing frenzy. I love how the announcer counts that down, that's really cool. So guys, that's it for this video. Unfortunately, I don't have a stat screen. I was debating on whether to upload this. Um, it is a Ricochet game on a DLC map, Pitfall. But I was debating on whether to upload this simply because the game slowed down towards the end here. But the Ricochet playlist is going away. I don't know if you guys have heard that in matchmaking. Unfortunately, it will be hybrided in with other playlists. And I'm not sure what those playlists are. So I'm not sure how much Ricochet you'll be seeing. Um, in the future on my channel. Um, I do have a few other Ricochet games that I can post, but um, let me know if you guys want those or if you're looking forward to any specific game types or maps in the future. And I'll see you guys on the next capture or whatever end of recording. Peace.